people who watch my puppy stuff, this is my little bit of showing in my world. I've got a few options to get home to the puppy property. That all those rescue dogs and things, I call that place Montana's Way because Montana was my German Shepherd. Uh, we were on TV on ads for RSPCA and other things for eight years, 2004 to 12. So this is going to that property that I call Montana's Way because he taught me all of the things and the stuff that I pass on or the information that I have observed is from Montana, hence Montana's Way. So yeah, a little bit lucky in so many ways of our world that we have tar all the way other way around. Yeah, this is also having the car that I do, I'm a grandma driver, but having the ability to have a couple of Ks four wheel driving whenever I choose that takes me to my own house. Hang on, I'll see if I can show you that view. being able to have that view when you're driving home. Try not to drive in this hole as I am. It's pretty unreal. I know it's a cloudy day but you get the point and there's a bit of smoke if you haven't. Um, learning to live in a bushfire zone is another crazy thing for our world. So this is our little driving home as I said I met my little German Shepherd Montana I say little he was probably 45 kilos and then at the end he was a little bit tubby uh, I call it cuddly but he, he was the one who showed me how dogs interact and by watching what he did and watching the actions that other dogs did with him within a, kel a kennel and a shelter and these roads are being cleared lately so we've got areas that I don't actually know which way we're going I, I know which way we're going but there's other off-roads and things that were never here so he showed me by interacting with other animals that were uh, I had to decide what lives and dies because that was my job, um, good and bad. Oh. If you get 80 animals in the Newcastle, Hunter Valley, New South Wales shelter every day, cats, dogs, horses, goats, guinea pigs, sheep, they've only got 160 cages. We've got a couple of hundred cages out the back for holding when people lose their dogs and things having the amount of animals come in I really had to and was given the opportunity the, the first words of the after my interviews and all the stuff with the RSPCA was we're gonna put it upon your shoulders to improve the image of the RSPCA by a lady who ended up being New South Wales manager and other people and connections and crazy stuff Eliza Walker um, they were her words and, and so I took that upon myself to actually try to make a positive difference. The animals were, we're trying to send them home where they've got other dogs so first of all we just decided to be able to people bring their dogs, that's not we, they had previously decided to bring your dog in to check it out but the problem with that is like this intersection right here that we've had this done for years there was only ever one track, I don't know, I really don't, I haven't been this way. The one on the left looks like there's not, not as many sticks broken, we're gonna go right, I don't know. Um, we could be turning around and going back. By us having the responsibility of protecting the other dogs, cats, kids or whatever else is at home, we needed to have an understanding of what the animals were gonna give them actually want to do or how they react. So I use Montana and had many, many negative comments over the years from vets, and vet nurses, and etc. etc. I, I sort of used him as bait 
Um, Any time he ever had holes in him, he, he'd worked with thousands of dogs over the years. Four and a half thousand within the shelters and then many other thousands after him that he's personally got written on his records. Now you can add probably another 10 that we had to do dodgy stuff. That same manager and myself at the shelter, we, we would have to hide dogs when Sydney or other, or other people came up that weren't quite ready. But the ones who look the most scared in the shelters and the ones who react negatively, as I explained to them and showed them, were the ones who are generally gonna be a good house dog because they're not used to being in jail. They're not used to being in these spots. Be going into someone's property here that I don't know too, by the way. Another road over to the right. There's another one up here to the left. I'm just sticking with the one. I haven't been this way for ages and they didn't have it cleared like this. Um, but by the dogs being chosen that look happy or friendly that are in a shelter environment, to me was a bit weird. Yes, some of them are amazing, but oh, here we go, that's perfect. I know where we are now. Um, this is normally filled with water and stuff, we haven't had rain for a while. But if you've got a dog that's happy to be in an environment where there are 160 other dogs are barking and people you don't know and you're not used to there, and as soon as you see one person, because you haven't used to being used to interacting with lots of people, that's, that's a significant problem. Not positive. Weird as that sounds. And here we go. I normally go to the left here. This road looks like it's been made and it looks, once again, there's no leaves on this road, so we'll stick to one with no leaves or twigs. Um, so picking the dogs that look happy and friendly and, and good to go in a shelter environment doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna be the best dogs to be rehomed. So actually choosing dogs that interact and once you take them out of that that environment, we, we I made them open up other kennels and things that are away from the, the shelter and the impound section so that the dogs had a chance to chill out and relax. And then I had a big cage that I used to put Montana in with me and him in there as well. And I got to see how the other dogs reacted. A lot of the ones that were friendly, hanging out, doing their things, then all of a sudden they come over, they get ultra jealous or possessive of whatever objects. Jealousy is just possession. Um, you know, wanting to keep that. So resource possessive, whether it's a human, animals, whatever it is. Yeah, well, so that's our little four-wheel drive stuff. And a little bit of Montana in my world. Pull up here and take this out of four-wheel drive and wander around. That's my mate's house just up ahead. Feel free to live here. But yeah, so that's that's a little bit of an understanding of how I started doing this. Maybe a bit scattered, bouncy, whatever else, Blair Witch style, yeah. But once Montana showed me from interacting with each and every different dog. He had, it was sort of like having a base level. I knew what he was, I knew what he was going to do, how he was going to respond the majority of the time. And the other animals interacting, I then watched other ones that were trying to assimilate or copy the, the same things that he's doing. By that, that gave me an understanding of what animals are really saying and realizing there's 40 different tail positions, there's 50 different types of licks, there's 18 different blinks uh, and ear positions, up to 20, depending upon the dog. The, the position that they face them, themselves towards you. The, the pouring, there's five different pouring types that I know, there's probably more. This is just what I've experienced and I can replicate and explain to other people. I normally don't go into the 50. Most people only need to need f know four. If your tail's in the air, it means beware. If the dog's licking lots, it's under stress. It wants to interact with the licking, not the tail in the air, it doesn't. Any tail that stops moving is a problem. But when they're licking lots, they're just trying to tell you some information. When they're blinking, they're trying to be submissive. When their ears move back against, tucked against their head, we all know that's scared. When they're forward, we all know that's attentive. Everyone thinks a wagging tail is a happy dog. It's not. Dogs that bite and attack will wag the tails the same. Uh, it's the way they wag it, what they're focusing on, and whether or not their eyes, their ears, their tail, and their body position is all focusing on a specific thing. If they're not, well, that's a probably generally okay. If they're all focusing on the same thing, that needs to, uh, it's a, need, a, a concern. So, lots of talking, driving back, happy days, as I do. Uh, once you've got an understanding of how to drive a car or ride a bike, you know how to do that for the rest of your life. Once you've got an understanding of what your animal's saying, it's exactly the same. Take care, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. From Nate and the Mutts. Love you, Montana and the rest.